Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to the SFLC podcast. I want to thank our sponsors, Dependable Solutions, innovating the future of your small to medium-sized business since 2012. It's 2018. If you're not accepting credit cards, you're losing money, plain and simple. Learn how you can save 40 to 60% on your overall credit card processing bill by going to dependable-solutions.net. Again, that is dependable slash solutions.net. Also, teststrips.com. That is teststrips with a Z dot com. Managing diabetes is your business. Making it affordable is ours. Sell your extra unused diabetes supplies for up to $50 per box and support a worthy cause. Rated a Better Business Bureau accredited A plus rating for over five years partnered with 98.5 The Sports Hub and affiliated with the American Diabetes Association. Make sure to check them out again. That is teststripswithaz.com. F-F-L-C Podcast. Oh, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the SFLC Podcast. I am Ryan Sprague. Uh, of course, those of you who are listening got all of our recap from UFC 226. We have Bellator coming up this weekend, but we also have an event that I've been able to cover uh, in the past, and MyMMANews.com has covered quite a few times, uh, Professional Fighters League. And we are joined out of Columbus, Georgia, by one of the commentators for PFL, Mr. Eves Edwards. Eves, thanks for taking the time with us today. Oh, thanks for having me, Ryan. I'm excited to talk to you, my man. Uh, well, and it's funny because we were both kind of trying to line this up, and you know, the schedules were kind of mixing and matching, and that's just how it works in this situation. So this works out perfectly for me. You know, I get to do the interview with you, I get to do the write-up, then I have to go and I have a hair appointment, and then I'm back here, it's just, it's one of those things, so I was happy to be able to get this done early, but if it sounds like I'm a million miles away, it's because of allergies. That's cool, I'm waiting until Monday um, Monday or Sunday to get my hair did. <laughs> you didn't see, now you're just joking with us. Um, no, I'm actually serious. Oh, really? Oh. I am serious about getting a haircut. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so you have your own personal stylist, I presume? Uh, no, but I have certain places that I go. I only go, when I'm in a certain city, I only go to a certain place. So did you hold off for D.C.? Did you have a place there lined up? Um, I went, I got my, my, my hair did before I got to D.C. Oh, there you go. So you, you, you know how to get it all freshened up and ready to go, and I'm kind of the same way. Uh, if, you couldn't, if you couldn't tell by the suit coat that I was wearing uh, at PFL Chicago, I, I also will have my own stylist as well. You're on top of your game, my man. <laughs> well, you know, you've got to be that way. So anyway, um, you know, obviously we end up going. We see you at PFL. You're doing a great job. You're alongside... One of your heroes, Boss Rutten. How did announcing for PFL come to fruition for you? Um, well, I worked at Fox initially with the UFC. And uh, one of the VPs there, George Greenberg, was at Fox when I first got there. Uh, he had seen me fight in Pride back in the day. And he was happy to see me there. So I was really happy to be there with him on top of that. But then he resigned from Fox, I, I think he was thinking about retiring, and um, somebody came up with the PFL that he thought was a really good thing, that he wanted to be a part of, I assume, and uh, when he started with them, he gave me a call and told me that he wanted to make me an offer, and that was a really cool thing, because when I first met George, I, um, I felt like, man, that's a guy that knows his stuff, and man, if this is what I want to do next, he's a guy I would love to learn from. Um, kind of like a mentor. Let him be the the the, the master splinter to my to my Michelangelo. You know, turn me into like a, a, a Leonardo or something. Not be so wild and, and crazy. 
with my with my Michelangelo Raphael kind of attitude. So um, he's trying to morph me more into a Donatello Leonardo kind of role. And um, I'm learning a lot from him, man. So so it, it's pretty good. It's a lot of fun, too. And you've been traveling all over the place. You know, you were in New York. You were in D.C. You were in Chicago. You've seen uh, three of these go down right now. What do you think stands out from your perspective about the PFL as opposed to the UFCs and the Bellators of the world? Man, what I what I like about what's going on in the PFL is the fighters. I I believe that the fighters just fight. There's there's no other concerns, and that's that's one thing that I've always loved about fighting itself is uh, when you're in there, you're not concerned with anything else but the guy in front of you and getting the win. Now, um, getting the win in other organizations sometimes. You kind of back off. You kind of when you get a lead, you get on your bicycle, and or, or sometimes even when you when the first fight starts, you don't want to lose because of, of the fact that losing changes things for you. Um, you don't get the you don't get the bonus check. That's that's in every organization still, including the PFL. You don't get the bonus check, but also um, one loss can mean you're done with with the organization. But with the PFL and it being a season thing, um, you know you you know that you're going to be there through the through the regular season, and you're trying to make it to the playoffs. So the fact that you're in there and you you you're just concerned for the win. That's really it. And when when a when a fighter wants to win, um, they get to be themselves. When their only concern is winning, not winning because of anything. Their only concern is winning. Um, because of the positive things that come with it, it's um, it's so much easier for a fighter to just focus on the fight itself, be in the moment. And when I say be in the moment, I mean be in the fight. Because if you're concerned with getting that bonus check, or if you're concerned with not getting cut by by having a loss, then you're you're not in the moment. You're thinking about the future, and then that that kind of slows you down. You have to be right there in that moment when you're fighting, and that's how the best guys fight. I mean, you see it. Including inside inside the other organizations that are out there, um, you know the best guys. Ask them, ask them what they're thinking about during the fight. They're not thinking about anything else but the moment that they're in. Wow, I mean, you you think that obviously fighters would would need to be hyper focused at that particular point, um, but I I never really thought of it in that context before, which is. They just want to be there to fight. They don't want to deal with the hustle and bustle. And I mean, you were in UFC, WEC, Strike Force, all of those. Did did you kind of feel bogged down by all the the extra stuff that wasn't fighting in those organizations when you fought? I wouldn't say bogged down. Um, the thing for me was, um, I just love fighting. When when it starts, you can't really be concerned with anything else. You know what I mean? Um, that and that's one of the reasons why my style was. Um, I've I've had some fights that were that weren't the most entertaining, but it wasn't because I was not trying to engage. It wasn't because I was on my bicycle trying to run away from someone. Um, that usually happens. That's that's in on my memory. That's always the other way around. If it happens. Uh, so that's not a concern for me because I just love fighting and I can't do anything but be in the moment anyway. So um, I would say personally, no, but I've had friends tell me that they were thinking about this or thinking about that. And um, that, that, that kind of makes me sad. I, I don't like that. I'm like, man, you can't, you can't be where you're at and um, you can't be successful unless you're where you're at. And um, you know, Obviously, you're alongside some famed fighters, uh, Bas Rutten, you know, you, you have yourself, you have Sean O'Connell, who won uh, his fight in Chicago. Being able to have the three of you, the four of you together, sorry, <laughs> um, all watching this, all looking at it from your own fight experience, do you think that you guys bring a more unique approach to broadcasting for mixed martial arts? I think, I definitely believe we bring a, a, a unique approach, but at the same time, I, I believe that every situation is unique, every individual is unique. So um, the way that you communicate your thoughts is is what you're presenting to the world when you're in that role. Um, 
for me, communicating my thoughts is really trying to put my feelings into words, whether it be about an emotion, whether it be about something I'm looking at, because that's really what fuels me, my emotions. Um, of course, I am not so passionate that I would just do foolish things and, and get my, cause myself problems or get into trouble by trying to live through my emotions or being fueled by my emotions. But at the same time, being able to communicate that um, when I'm watching a fight and something gets me excited and, the re and being able to communicate the reason why it gets me excited um, and, and my thoughts on, on what the guy who's making the move, what his uh, reasoning is or, or what, what, he, what he's feeling in that, in that moment or what I believe he's feeling in that moment. I, I believe being able to communicate that really helps with uh, translating what I'm seeing and at the same time, um, I like to break down the technique of something and sometimes the technique of something is is not just what's happening in there but the thought process that goes into the guy pulling off the technique. And, and you know, and that was another thing. I've heard a lot of people uh, who have been watching all the organizations say what they love about PFL is their ability to actually, they, they draw on the screen, they break down the technique and they really kind of make this more understandable to the casual fan. And, and I think that was something that you guys have really kind of excelled at, is being able to take a technique, take a particular situation, and break it down as to why it happened. I think sometimes, you know, we just get caught up, like you said, in the emotions of a fight, you know, winning with a knockout or winning with this crazy submission that we forget to talk about what led up to that particular finishing move. I, um, I understand what you're saying. I, I got to give, I gotta give um, George Greenberg some credit for that because he introduced me to a man, John Ferrazzi, who has really helped me be able to, to put those ideas, um, I was going to say on paper, but put those ideas into the world. Um, through, through helping me with, with the Telestrator and, and how to, and what I'm explaining in the Telestrator. Um, he's done a lot of work with a lot of different sports. And um, I've, I've, put, I've spent some good time with him and learned quite a bit from, from perhaps this on how to explain my thoughts, really. So um, I don't know. I, I, I can't take all the credit, but. It's just like, like anything else. For me, it's just like, like fighting and having a coach. Georgia and John have, have taught me so much and they've coached me so well. Um, I just need to continue with the drilling that they've taught me and, and just be able to put things out there because um, they've invested some time in me and, and I, I appreciate and love that, man. I hear you. Now, let's talk a little bit about PFL. You know, obviously, they have the scoring system, the point system, which is very unique uh, for what we've been seeing in MMA throughout the past few years. Uh, we've gone through PFL 1, 2, and 3. So you have been in New York. You have been in Chicago. You have been in D.C. Of the three that you've seen so far, are there any of those that kind of stick out in your head as being one of your favorites to date? You know... <laughs> that's a re that's a really messed up question, Ryan. That's mm. like asking it's like asking a parent um, which one of his kids is his favorite, you know? Because you know they have a favorite, but it has no but they can't tell you that and at the same time um, <laughs> it's not it's not really based on anything except except some personal bias. And um my personal bias is always going to lean towards 155 pound weight class. Of course. <laughs> so um, I I I love Chicago. That that was that was awesome. But um, I I try to think back, and there's not a single fight in the PFL that I was like, eh, whatever. I mean, even the fights that don't go that that, that don't get finished, um, guys are still trying to win all the way through. You you look at the Andre Harrison Juma Baker Persian fight. And um, Andre was dominant, but Tershin was still fighting back. Um, it was pretty one-sided. 
and and it's very hard for a guy to get to get a finish on someone who's who's primary goal at this point is to defend themselves and they know what it is that you're trying to do to an extent. Um, but even though that fight went the distance and the pace wasn't the highest, it was still interesting for me to watch. Now, I don't know if that's because I've spent hours and hours, like thousands of hours watching fights and I know what's going on and I'm looking for the next move. And it's kind of like one of those movies where you don't necessarily know what's going to happen, but you have an idea of the possibilities. So you want to see how it turns out. So that's kind of how that fight, like those fights that go the distance for me in the PFL are, because even if they're one-sided, the other guy's in there for a reason, and he definitely has a chance. And he's he's not just trying to hold on and make it to the end. He's he's trying to find a way to to, to, to pull it off. Yeah. Now you you did mention Chicago, and I I wasn't trying to force you to Chicago by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, you were. No, I was um, not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. You know, I did want to talk to you because you've been in two states that we know the athletic commissions can be a little odd. So the reason that I was asking and, and, and seeing what was going on in Chicago was you saw some of the fights and a little bit uh, prematurely maybe. Or oh, it, we can, I mean, you can say it. You can say it. Jason and I got screwed. Yeah, that's what happened. Okay, yes. Then, I mean, Jason High got screwed. And then we also saw the shot to the midsection that ended up causing a fighter to not be able to recover. So because of that, he lost. I mean, are these growing pains that you're going to see in this sport? Or did the Illinois Athletic, State Athletic Commission not really have their stuff together when this came up? I think these are growing pains that you're going to see in these commissions. It's not, it's not the sport's fault. Um, the sport, you know, the, the sport has a set, set of rules. We, we've been here since, you know, 1992, uh, I mean, sorry, 1993. And, um, it's, it's, it's really just the commission. We had some submissions, the commission and, 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 and New York also. Um, and it's not, it's not like these people are, are, out to, to get the sport or anything like that. It's just, it's, it's kind of new in, in these in these regions. And um, in New York, we had issues with the heavyweights. Uh, there was a, there is a rule, a stipulation in, in the state of New York that we found out that heavyweights, or not heavyweights, I mean, you can't be more than 25 pounds apart. And um, that, that, that only applies to heavyweights, I guess. But at the same time, it's like it's a weight class. If the weight class is from 207 to 266, then like the weight class is, is already set. It's approved. If you do this, the weight class is coming here. Um, I don't know. Yeah, the promotion, I guess, could do that research. But um, and why do you have a heavyweight weight class? I don't understand. I guarantee you uh, there have been boxing matches in the heavyweight division where guys were at more than 25 pounds apart. I, 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 I mean, it's been, New York has been too strong in, in the sport of boxing for too long for that not to be the case. So I don't understand why that was the case for, for us with the PFL and the heavyweights and mixed martial arts. You know, when you mentioned how every individual state athletic commission is going to have problems, at some point do you expect every state to come up with a unified set of rules or is that just never going to happen and we need to get past that concept? Um, as long as society doesn't fall, it'll happen. You know, it's, it's inevitable. But I couldn't give you a time frame on it. It's, it's not going to happen next week. Uh, I don't believe it's going to happen by the end of this season. Um, it's possible, but um, it, it, it's weird. It's, it's kind of like everything else in, in, in the world, really. But it just take the country, for example, in the U.S. I mean, you have um, some states, you have to wear a helmet when you're riding a motorcycle, but there's some states where you don't. There are some states where, when I first moved to the U.S., I mean, in Texas, you could drive around with a, with a, uh, with a semi-automatic rifle um, hanging in your rear windshield window, you know, um, but... You you can't you can do that in other places. There there it's weird, but at the same time, it's like the sport has been around for twenty years now, twenty five years now. So 
this a lot of the sport has been established and these little things that we're we're running into um that we ran into in Chicago and New York, these things have already been worked out in Nevada or in New Jersey. And like it's they, they already figured it out. Why why do you have to figure it out for yourself? No, it's already I'm... been established. Let's just pick let's just adopt someone else's rules because it works. We know that it works. So let's do that and move on and stop with this posture. That's a, that's a great point that you make. And I, I think that it will happen, but like you said, it's gonna take it's gonna take some time. Um, so obviously we have PFL four coming up next Thursday. You will be back in the state of New York in Uniondale, New York. Uh, uh, that's going to be the featherweights and the heavyweights fighting. Uh, this is round two. So moving forward and having seen all these fighters fight on PFL and having them see, uh, having seen them fight in the past, we're looking at this card. Which which fight is the most intriguing to you leading up to PFL four? Most intriguing? Oh man! <laughs> really, I, I would go with Alexandre Almeida and Steven Seiler. Um They both they both scored six points in the first first bout out. Um, Almeida didn't really have a challenge at all. He kind of walked right through Lee Colville. Siler got hurt and was able to was able to hit the comeback. So we now, I mean, for fans who don't know Siler, they they have an idea of how tough he is. Um, they don't know how tough Almeida is, and he's a tough guy in his own right. But um, I think both both of these guys can compete with each other in every realm. I believe certain individuals. Different guys have strengths in different areas, for sure. So they're going to going to be stronger in a certain area. I believe Siler probably has the better hands, but Almeida uh, is more dynamic, and he's, his striking is still on point. Um, when I say Siler has the better hands, I, I, I'm going to take that back and not say the more crisp or technical hands, but he has good power. Um, and on the ground, I think that's where it starts to even out. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm really excited about that fight. Um, Andre Harrison and Nazari Malagheri, uh, that's a good fight, but um, they're both low on the points rankings. So, like, one of those guys probably needs a finish, um, and one of those guys, I think, is, is, is a guy who should be in the, in the playoffs. I think both of those guys should be in the playoffs, but I don't, one of these guys may not make it just because they're going up against each other and they're low on points. So one guy has to score bonus points, and one, the guy who doesn't score the bonus points, I don't believe he's going to make the playoffs. So these are the things that we start looking at now. We start looking at numbers um, outside of the fight to see who's going to go into the first round of the playoffs, and, and that's where it's going to start. To, the stories are going to start to really come out. You know, you mentioned how uh, the scoring system works and how it's a top eight from each division that uh, makes the playoffs. For those out there who don't know, explain a little bit how the matchmaking works going after the first round leading up to it. Is this blind to draw? How does it work? Um, wow, That's a, that, that question is one I won't answer because I am not sure. We, we've discussed um, some things in the past about how that should go, but the matchmaker is Ray Teffo, and I haven't spoken with Ray about ultimately how that was done, so I don't necessarily know. Um, I'm looking at it, and I see some winners versus winners, but I also see some winners versus losers. I see Lance Palmer versus Jumabek Turgeon, and um, Turgeon lost to Andre Harrison. Um, Lance Palmer won in the second round um, in, in his fight with the rear naked. So it's, it's one of those situations where I don't know how it played out, but um, yeah, I would, I would want to talk to Ray or, or George and Carlos and those guys before commenting on that. Oh, absolutely. And of course, you could probably, uh, I know that as we get into the later rounds, you know, we've seen everybody with their introduction fight. Now, as we get into the later rounds and we see fighters, like you said, some are fighting against a person who lost last time while they have a win on their record. Two people are fighting, like you said, that have low on points, but both won. So a lot of, of stories, as you said, are going to end up coming to light 
as PFL moves forward. Uh, and then, of course, I, I do want to make one more mention before we kind of let you go, going back again to Chicago. You know, you had Kayla Harrison in her debut fight. And, and that was something that a lot of people were really looking forward to. And I just want to get your opinion on how that fight went down, how Kayla did, and, and so forth. I think Kayla did really well. She's, uh, of course, this is, <laughs> I'm biased, but um, she's with a great team, man. Um, we saw her perform on a mixed martial arts level, and that's something she'd never done, you know, against a woman who had had, what, eight, or was in her eighth professional mixed martial arts fight. She'd competed, yes, uh, outside of mixed martial arts, not at the level of the Olympics, but at the same time, she, uh, she had competed at high levels when she had won some Pan Am Jiu Jitsu tournaments uh, at the brown belt level. So she had some competition, uh, a lot of competition experience, and she had more fight experience than than Kayla. And Kayla was Kayla won that fight from beginning to end, um, and not just with her judo background. Of course, she brought that in with her, and that helps a lot. But uh, the ground and pound she was throwing, it, it was vicious. It was like I, I would not want to be beneath that woman taking punches. Because like she she was she was thrown with some heat, um, it was it was kind of violent. I, I think she's been hanging out with Matt and a little bit too much. <laughs> uh, so so it, it was one of those situations. It was it was a whole lot of fun to watch. Um, I can't wait until she she comes back and she she fights again because it's a, a really good place for her to grow. And um, I think she's going to be a threat, man. I think she's going to be a real threat in the world of women's mixed martial arts. Wow, so much said in so little time. Uh, and and Eva, Eva, I was able to even keep you, you know, <laughs> under half an hour. But before we let you go, uh, we'll see you next Thursday, July 19th, PFL4, Uniondale, New York. You can find on NBC Sportsnet starting at 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central. But Eve, before we let you go, man, we always like to let our, our guests Tell everybody where they can find them on social media platforms, you know, any sponsors that you want to plug. Yeah, well, you guys can always find me on social media, on Twitter and Instagram at Subjectu Master. Um, and you can find uh, you can find us on Facebook Watch, the, the pre, pre-fight or and the prelim show, or the, what we call the undercard, is on Facebook Watch. And we go live, and I believe we go live on the East Coast at 6, and then we move to NBCSN at 9 p.m. Um, and also, thank you, my sponsor, my suit sponsor from Chicago, Indochino. That, that beautiful maroon burgundy suit that I had on was a custom piece that people at Indochino made for me, and um, I love their suits, man. They make me look so good. So you guys that, that are trying to impress the ladies or impress someone in a job interview, you need to look those guys up because uh, you're walking there looking fresh to death. All right. Uh, Eve, thank you again for your time. We appreciate it. We look forward to uh, getting all of your commentary moving forward with PFL. And we will talk to you as PFL season continues, my man. So uh, enjoy your day down in Georgia, and we will see you next week in New York. Thank you, Ryan. You have a great one, man. I'll see you pretty soon. Absolutely.